One day, Prophet Muhammad explained the Islamic paradise to his followers. Quran, Surah ad duhan verses 51 to 54. Lo, those men who kept their duty will be in a place secure amid gardens and water springs, attired in silk and silk embroidery, facing one another. Even so it will be, and we shall wed them unto, Huris, fair ones with wide, lovely eyes. Surely for the God-fearing awaits a place of security, gardens and vineyards, and maidens of swelling breasts, like of age, and a cup overflowing. Will we get married in paradise, O Rasul Allah? Yes, indeed. The smallest reward for the people of paradise is an abode where there are 80,000 servants and 72 wife or huris. How can we have intimacy with so many wives, O Rasulullah? Hmm, that's a good question. Oh, of course we can. In paradise, a Muslim will be given the strength of 100 person. The man will be able to have physical intimacy with a hundred virgins in one day. They are in an infatuated state with their husbands. Haven't you ever seen a she-camel in heat? She is like that. The inhabitants of paradise today are busy in their rejoicing. Busy doing what, O oh Rasulullah? You will be busy deflowering virgins in paradise. How can we be sure that we will go to heaven, O oh Razalala? If you are martyred in jihad, then you will definitely go to heaven. Quran, Surah at Tawbah, verse 111. Allah has indeed purchased from the believers their lives and wealth in exchange for paradise. They fight in the cause of Allah and kill or be killed. What if I don't die as a martyr? Then your fate in the afterlife will be determined by your good amal. Quran, Surah Al-Ara, verse 8. The weighing on that day will be just. As for those whose scale will be heavy with good deeds, only they will be successful. But all of you will have to go through the hellfire. Quran, Surah Maryam, verse 71, 72. There is none of you who will not pass over hell. This is a decree your Lord must fulfill. Then we will deliver those who are devout, leaving the wrongdoers there on their knees. Oh, that is so scary and uncertain. In that case, let us fight the infidels for the cause of Allah. If we die, we will go to heaven to meet the Huris. If we live, we can enjoy the female captives and loots of war. The example of a mujahid in Allah's cause, and Allah knows better who really strives in his cause, is like a person who fasts and prays continuously. Allah guarantees that he will admit the mujahid in his cause into paradise if he is killed, otherwise he will return him to his home safely with rewards and war booty. So the promise of heaven and being married to Huris are directly related with the call to go to war for Allah. This promise is repeated several times in the Quran, such as in Surah ad dukan verse 54, and Surah ad tur verse 20. We will marry them to maidens with gorgeous eyes. The word, hum, is masculine plural. While the word, zawaj, means, pair, or marry. The word, Huron is plural feminine. Therefore, the Arabic scholars thought that this must be about men being paired or married with virgin females or maidens. But actually, the word, hoer, does not mean, maidens. Rather, it is the plural form of an Arabic feminine adjective, that means simply, white. The word rin, is translated as, big eyes. Quran commentators and Arabic scholars often explain that, it actually means, big white-eyed virgins. But the word virgin is not in that sentence. So the sentence is understood as, and we will marry them with ones with big, white eyes. This is strange, because creatures with big white eyes usually are blind or have some health issues. For instance, in the Quran, it is also said of Jacob that from all his crying over his son Joseph, his eyes become, white, in Surah Yusuf, verse 84. 
Christoph Luxemburg explained that the Arabic meaning of the verse does not make sense, both grammatically and semantically. Luxembourg argues that the Quran was not originally written exclusively in Arabic but in a mixture with Syro-Aramaic, the dominant spoken and written language in the Arabian Peninsula through the 8th century. Therefore, he examined the real meaning of the verse by comparing it with Syro-Aramaic words and consonants. In Aramaic, the word, hoar, can mean, grapes. The word, in, in Aramaic means, crystal or transparent. The meaning of these words in Aramaic is, under crystalline grapes. The Arab translators added the rasm or diacritical marks later, and this caused misinterpretations about the real meaning of the sentence. Luxembourg removed the two dots at the beginning of the sentence, then the letter Z, for Zawagnahum, or to marry, became, R, for Rawanahum, or to rest. This is the new meaning of the verse and we will let them rest under crystalline grapes. Luxembourg said that similar statements about grapes were in Christian hymns about giving grapes to the new soul who had just arrived in heaven. He said that the exact source of information came from the Christian hymn originating from the 4th century CE, titled, In Heaven, written by Saint Ephraim the Syrian, which refers to, heavenly grapes. Luxembourg explained that because the Syriac word used by Saint Ephraim for grapes was feminine, the Quran scholars mistakenly thought that the Quranic verse was related to having marriages in heaven. A Coptic fresco from the 5th century in the monastery Deir al Syrian, which was the monastery of the Syrians, shows that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gave grapes of paradise to the souls of the newly departed to refresh them. That was what Orthodox Christians believed at that time. This picture supports the Aramaic meaning of Quran, Surah ad Dukan verse 54, and Surah at Tur, verse 20. If Luxembourg is right, then the entire Quran verses about the rewards in paradise are nothing but mere wild fantasy. Would the Muslims be willing to die if the heavenly rewards were 72 grapes instead of 72 virgins? I doubt it. Did Prophet Muhammad get the information about Islamic heaven from the Arabic linguistic scholars who misunderstood the meaning of Syro-Aramaic Christian hymns? Or did it come from his own imagination? Whichever his source came from, one thing is for sure, he controlled his illiterate and gullible followers with the promises of heavenly pleasures and torments of hellfire.